Uh, meanwhile, let's talk about events in London yesterday. The COVID inquiry uh, it was formally opened by the former Court of Appeal judge, Baroness Heather Hallett, uh, who uh, is, uh, as she said, uh, those who have suffered will be at the heart of the independent public inquiry and pledged she would conduct a thorough and fair hearing. Uh, she has also said uh, that the uh, response would not drag on for decades. We've certainly seen public inquiries which have dragged on for a very long time. Lessons have not been learned. But when she talks about uh, those who have suffered being at the heart of the independent public inquiry, is that always about those who lost loved ones rather than the many tens of millions more who also suffered? Well, let's talk about this with Francis Hoare. He's a public law barrister. Uh, he's also been a prominent anti-lockdown campaigner throughout. Good morning to you, Francis. Morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, I have to say, um, I, I was watching some of the footage yesterday of the inquiry, and, and it is, uh, uh, Baroness Hallett pointed out, you know, she's not going to be able to cover every single issue, um, but she was going to look at things like do not resuscitation, orders in the NHS, the quality of care given to people, uh, care homes is going to be an issue as well. Um, but the big concern about this inquiry, I mean, it wasn't even going to talk about children and the impact on them from lockdown policy in schools, is that it's going to focus specifically on COVID, whether we locked down too late or, or not enough or something, rather than the policy itself and whether the entire national and indeed international response was actually the wrong one. Yes, and you mentioned that uh, the uh, Lady Hallett said that the families uh, bereaved will be at the centre of the inquiry. Um, well, well, that is all very well, and I see that the first four um, participants, core cool participants, are COVID-19 bereaved families for justice in England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Um, that, that is, um, however, a campaigning organisation with an objective, which the objective of which is to show, uh, as they see it, that the government should have locked down earlier and harder. Yeah. Uh, that is broadly yeah. their objective. And so they are not a neutral organisation. That's not to say they shouldn't have a core cool participant uh, status. The remaining participants in this part of the inquiry are all, without exception, public bodies. And we know that public bodies have been also uh, putting forward the suggestion that this is a normal and appropriate response. Interestingly, the first yeah. module is, um, this is quite an important point, the first module is the um, investigation into the preparedness of the country for the pandemic. And I've been reading through um, the opening note by counsel to the inquiry, and it barely, if at all, mentions the extensive pandemic plans which were completely ignored after March, mid-March 2020. Um, and that's quite an extraordinary omission. It's also quite an extraordinary omission that the way in which this um, preparedness is couched does not consider historical, um, it, it, it barely, or if, if at all, considers historical precedents. It does consider international comparisons, but only to this pandemic, which were international, um, international approaches which were completely ab abnormal yeah. and contrary to everything that we have learned before 2020. Yeah, I mean, and this is the thing, the, the narrative has built up that, it, well, everything would have been fine if only we locked down sooner. Well, there are plenty of other countries that locked down a lot sooner than us relative to when the virus hit their shores, other than your New Zealand's and your Australia's, who basically ended up having to be in lockdown pretty much for two years uh, and, and closing their borders. Well, that wasn't an option to us. We're an international hub uh, of travel. As we're not on, you know, the other side of the, of the world from most of where uh, the, the COVID had hit. But, but everything is focused on, if we'd only locked down sooner, everything would be fine. The, there is plenty, I mean, huge amounts of evidence that that is simply not the case. Um, but also, again, the fact that, you know, most people don't realise that SAGE, the body advising the government on the medical side of this, the, uh, the health side of this, never even discussed lockdown. Why not? Because it was such an absurd idea. It had been ruled out specifically as a policy by the World Health Organization and by our own uh, NHS and, and, uh, and uh, emergency bodies because it was such a terrible thing to do. Because it would have so many untold long-term consequences, many of which are playing out right now. If the COVID inquiry doesn't cover any of that, that actual debate about whether or not we should have had a policy which basically locked young, healthy people in their homes for months on end, destroyed our economy, etc., etc., if and, and, and the health of the nation as well, if it doesn't debate that, what is the point of the COVID inquiry? Well, quite, uh, because the the pandemic itself was a natural disaster in a sense. It was it was a, a pandemic that obviously it, it is caused, whether it's caused artificially or not, it wasn't caused in this country. 
So this isn't an, an inquiry into something that is caused by the government. It's an inquiry into the way in which the government has tried to mitigate the effects of it. And, and therefore, the consequences of the mitigation of the effects are not only on the pandemic, but on everything else. That, that you might think, is obvious. It's interesting you mentioned about mm -hmm. SAFE. Quite right, it didn't it specifically advise um, lockdown. But what's quite interesting is that having not done that, once it was implemented, they didn't discuss it. And they assumed from that moment that this was the appropriate measure and also oh. failed to take into account or to ask other organisations to take into account the consequences. Oh. And we know from Rishi Sunak um, that, the, um, that, that there was some discussion in SAGE about the consequences and the economic and social consequences and democratic consequences of lockdown. But those discussions were shut down insofar as yeah. the government should have been taking advice from others, not from a scientific group, then they didn't. And so that is, so it's no excuse to say that SAGE were only concerned with scientific advice, because the reality is, is as we saw, uh, is that the key, and this is one thing that the inquiry should absolutely be considering, the democratic effects. And, and by that, I mean, in part, the, the hugely disproportionate influence and power that people like Witty and Balance had on the government. Um, we, we see that not only in the Caravaggio-style um, picture of Witty ha ha hammering into Boris Johnson, looking very like he was the one holding the um, ropes of power um, yeah. in about June 2020, but also in the fact that when they were giving evidence, for example, to the House of Commons Committee in November 2020, they would say things like, well, we have only this option. They, 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 they approached this completely contrary to what they were saying in March yeah. and earlier 2020. Um, yes, I, I've, said to, I've said to many people, if you want to know what we should have done, just go back to every public com press conference which Witty and Valance alongside the Prime Minister gave uh, in the run-up to March 23rd of 2020. And everything they said up to that point was what we should have done and, and, and would have been the same policy. But sadly not. I have a very big fear we're not going to get to the bottom of this with this inquiry. But Francis, well, I know you keep up that fantastic work on that.